Guess who's back? Right, here we are, folks, caught offside with Linfield skipper Jamie Mulgrew, the second best Linfield player ever to Achilles can't be on, obviously. <laughs> uh, how's lockdown treating us, you, mate? Fine. Now, um, wife still full time work, working from yeah. home, busier than ever. Um, so I'm a been a full time dad now for Brilliant. nine weeks. Uh, <laughs> Uh, just, just, just before we start, there's a wee message here from Gary Eggles. He says, you're the only player in Linfield history to wear a medium top and double XL shorts. <laughs> well, <we> do. <laughs> Never. He, oh, I ask him for shorts and he's not big enough for you. <laughs> right, uh, we'll just get into it, Jimmy. So, uh, just going to talk about yourself from you were a kid growing up and stuff right to where you are today. So... Banger man, shangle by the sea, life growing up. What's your first memories of football? Um, I went to, um, was playing for the BB um, down in Banger here, which back then there was no sort of clubs to regularly play for, you know, what the kids get now twice a week and everything else. And yeah. back then for me and certainly down here in Banger, it was all about playing for the BB and that was the highlight of your Saturday morning um, looking forward to getting up and hopefully the weather wasn't bad where the matches would be cancelled um, went from there then to I would have trained at the Shankill Leisure Centre which would have been with St Andrews yeah um, so was that, that was your youth team going, going through the underage well, and, well, and well it was Sort of it was, and as I say, the BB was sort of the your main sort of football games that you would have got, um, probably along with school as well. Um, I would have played a lot with the school and stuff, but as I say, BB was the pinnacle at that sort of age, you know, yeah, certainly yeah. down here. Um, guy called Jolton Cade who runs St. Andrews, um, yeah, brought me up and sort of trained a few times at the Shankle Leisure Center and then. That was just for, for training, sort of once a week. It sort of tailed off, then went back. As I say, I was playing for the BB, and then a guy called Raymond Alexander, who's still about now with football, mm -hmm. and got me into Hollywood Boys. Um, and also, I was probably there for about... I would have been there till it was about... I think it was about 12, 13. And then I went on then to St Andrews. Right. And St Andrews always had a great youth team. Like yeah. I, I can remember playing against them. Was there any anybody had note in your your team growing up? Um, no. In my <laughs> team at the time, whenever we were sort of with a few boys that you know went across the water and stuff. Yeah. Um, Paul Hamilton went to um, Knott's Forest, um, who was a really sort of hard, old-fashioned centre back, if you want to call it. Really, really sort of. Nasty sort of centre back, which probably Oops, you're not yeah. to anymore. Yeah. Um, no, but we had a I um guy was probably was lucky in the upbringing that I got sort of from there, um from the school and I got from the guys that that um that took us and again sort of more, which is great now with sort of the way the world certainly Northern Ireland is now that. We had boys playing for us from all over the from all over the, the country, um, both sides of the divide, if you want to say, um, which was great. Um, and it didn't matter what you were, who you were, you know, you yeah. came and played for St Andrews, and no matter where it was was based, obviously it was based in, in a you know a Protestant area, but it didn't matter. Um, oh, brilliant, yeah. I remember so, a few few friends, Mark Patterson and stuff used to yeah. play for them. It's brilliant. And we, um, and as I say, we had the, the, the two guys, Harry Larkin and Billy McDonald, that took us were great guys and who had been with St Andrews for a long, long time. Um, yeah, yeah. And again, you know, Hollywood Boys was fantastic for me as well. Um, again, a good group of players. We played in the South Belfast regularly and 
um, were dominating that. And then we went on to which was the strongest league at the time, was the Lisburn League. Um, and we got our eyes open. We thought we were a good team. <laughs> yeah, that's where all the scouts always went. That's it, that was my next question. Did you ever have any trials growing up through the yeah, underage? I did, no, I did. I did quite a, quite a few trials, um, a number of teams and, and things. Um, nothing ever materialised. Um, I suppose you could say that it just wasn't good enough. <laughs> right. uh, so... Uh, We'll skip, no we'll, sorry, mate, we'll skip on. We'll sign it. We'll skip on. Glenn Torn, how did that come about? Um, well, as I was obviously with St Andrews, as I said at the time, um, we were finishing up, and uh, there was a whole thing going on with with the league and stuff and with ourselves. Um, that we were sort of. I think it was. I near sure it was around January time. Um, still sort of half the season to go. Um, I was sort of involved with sort of Northern Ireland setups and things and mm-hmm. I obviously needed to play competitive football yeah. um, and, uh, and play somewhere. Um, I had quite a lot of friends who were at Glen Torn at the time. Right. So I was familiar with them, familiar with the guys that took the team. So I just went and played. Um, this was under 15, I think it was now. Right. And we went to went to the Foil Cup as well. Had a really good time. Um, as I say, really like the guys that took us, really knew all the players and we all got on really, really well. We had a good trip. And Brilliant. just basically now, to be honest with you, yes, I've, I've always supported Linfield and stuff, but I was comfortable and happy in the environment. So yeah, sort of thought, what's what's the point in, in, in changing anything? Yeah. Um, yeah. At the end of that season, I could have went to... The Linfield, um, obviously with um, Stick Thompson that was there at the time, um, and his son were taking that age group. But as I say, yes, I, I've always you know supported Linfield and stuff. But I was happy and familiar with the environment that it was in, and I didn't yeah. feel any need to change it. Yeah. So did you eventually break into the Glens first team? Um. So I was there. Um. Stayed there till I was nineteen. Played, um, I played a countdown to Michelle. It was on the bench for a countdown to Michelle game. Then I'll come on and we played Glebe, right. and then I played. Uh, came off the bench again, um, in the league, and that was away to Newry. Right. That was two, two appearances. Um, again, Glen Torn had a fantastic team. Right. Then, yeah. Um, and the balance, like the hard Scott Young and stuff. I, I in the middle. Like. I have to say now, like those guys, um, you know, we we had a very very good reserve team. We got to the final of Stealing Sons one year as well. Yeah. Um, Bangor beat us. There was actually had to play a replay because of the snow. Right. Um, as I say, we had a great team. Um, we actually beat. We actually won the George Wilson that year. We beat Limfield in the final, and then it was a double header, and we beat then Limfield again. In the semi final, the uh, Stealing Sons, which obviously got us to the final, yeah. and that was sort of the time then that Linfield were sort of interested and in sort of speaking to me to see if I would be interested. Um, but I never done anything because obviously I was still, you know, with Glenn Torn and stuff. But as I say, the guys that I that were there at the time were fantastic people, yeah, you know. That was a great I, Glenn's team, like it was. Hi. There was an up, there was times, you know, where one or two of us from the Zuras would end up and trained, you know, with the first team and stuff. And you got a real buzz for that. It gave you sort of an eye opener of, of what level you needed to get to and just even the tempo and the pace of it all. And yeah. as I say, the, the the guys that played then, you know, big, big legends at Glen Torn, big legends around the Irish League. And yeah. They were fantastic, fantastic guys and they were they were brilliant, um, with me as as a young kid. Yeah. My granda, he's from the He's Belfast and he would have brought me, especially at that, when I was 14, 15. Like that Chris, Walk, like Chris Walker, Glenn Danning, like that team was, was brilliant. Chris Walker was brilliant for me now. He was, he, I don't know what was going on at the time, you know, with him and, and, and Roy Coyle or whatever, but yeah. there was a time he was playing um, with us in the reserves a lot and he was, he was fantastic, he was brilliant. And I don't think... Um, I don't think Chris sort of got the credit that he deserved because he was. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, 
he was a brilliant footballer, uh, you know, as well as a defender. Yeah. So uh, move on from there. Nineteen years old, you make a move to Linfield. Does is it David Jaffe come approach you, or is it a uh, reserve team manager? Or? Um, at the time, it was it was through um our scout, who's actually still there now, Willie McCune. Um, now he um my dad would have done a bit of scouting around around youth football and things, and Willie was familiar with me and familiar with my dad. Um, and um knew knew that I was a Limfield fan and, 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 and whatever else. Um, and he sort of touched base with me at the time. And I said, look, I don't know what's going to happen with me at the end of the season here, but, you know, I'd certainly be interested. Um, and I actually spoke to Glen Avon and, and Crusaders as well now. Um, this was the time whenever Crusaders had just been relegated. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, I had actually agreed to go to Limfield and it wasn't... It was, possibly a couple of days maybe after that a guy who coached me a lot whenever I was younger who was with Crusaders for a long time a, a man called Charlie Murphy um, and he had just then been brought in along with with Stephen Baxter and stuff and hindsight if, if, if Charlie had been there before I had signed for Linfield that might have been yeah uh, uh, you know a more decision where I might have went flip well I know Charlie he knows me yeah um and all those things but as i say we went to limfield and people probably at the time were going what's he doing um i just gonna say because when you get there there's likes of owen carney macarive michael galt did you see when you you first you first went were you straight in with the first team or was it sort yeah, of yeah it was um sort of squad number all the gear now um yeah. part of the first team squad um Quite is, that, is that where the 22 comes from? Is that yeah, just, just, that was the first number, um, Nal, and you just sort of, but Gary the kit man, that's basically more or less your number then, you know, yeah. for, for, for the period of time you're there. Um, and as I say, it was quite um, daunting, if you want to call it that, you know, so going in that changing room. Like. I, and, and as I say, you know, me going in there, a young boy, and... Um, saying things and getting on the way they did and which I had never <laughs> experienced or seen before. Yeah. <laughs> My eyes were just wide going yeah. with the mouth open, just not knowing what I was sort of in a so, changing room with. Um, so you see when you're uh you're for, you're in your training away, is it is the training ruthless like or yeah. Um like, probably now if you want to say look, you know, yourself being involved in football, it's Football can be a, a different environment now, really. Like, um, you know, there was, as I say, I was very, very lucky with the guys that I grew up with at Linfield and, and played with that in the way that I was schooled. The way that I was schooled, um, now, you know, from them. Yeah, yeah. Training was always intense, you know, you always wanted to win in training, just, just everything. Um, but yeah, I went, I went there, went there now and sort of, as I say, I, I had in my head that I would give it, you know, my best shot of nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. And if it, and you know, if it doesn't work out at Limfield, then, you know, I'll go somewhere else, but at least I know that I've tried my best and give it a go, if you want to say, the, the two biggest clubs in, in Northern Ireland at the time. Yeah, brilliant, mate. So your first season... Uh, Linfield, it's a clean sweep. League, League Cup, Irish Cup, kind of got them shield. Did you get much game time? Can you remember? I actually, um, to be fair, whenever is at the time, whenever I then eventually uh, got the opportunity and met um, with David Jeffrey, obviously about coming to the club. Um, one thing that always sticks in my mind that David always said, you know, at the time whenever I met him was that if you were good enough, you would get. Yeah. an opportunity and in that first season now um, I remember um, we played a few um, pre-season games and um, got away then we went away to Ballamallard played there um, and then obviously there was a European trip um, I missed I didn't go to the one in Ventspils it was the Latvia now but then I ended up going to Hamstad went there played so it was on the bench then, um, made an appearance in the home home game. Um, 
And then the first game of the season um, was against Glen Avon. And I actually came off the bench there and played. Right. And then I actually um, ended up doing a block tackle and a, and a dumb medial. Ah. So I actually ended up um, doing it, I think it was two or three times that year. And I was out for about, I think it was near enough 16 weeks. Right. And it was a long time just because it kept reoccurring. Um, but I ended up, you know, the, the game that would have stood out for me was whenever um, I was sort of back from injury. But I remember playing, um, David started me actually away to um, Lima Valley, it was now, and didn't play well. Wasn't great. And I knew in my head uh, during the game and after that I was nowhere near fit. Yeah. Um, and I knew that I had to do, you know, something about it. And I did, and I'd sort of put in the work and by myself outside of training. And I remember then turning up and were to play um, Shelbourne in the Satanta Cup. Right. And just right. out of the blue, I was playing and was shocked. Um, and we ended up beating Shelbourne 2 0 that night. And then I think it was then that Saturday that we went down to Armagh that we, the game that we won then would win the league, played that game. I think all in all that season now, I think all together played, I was involved anyway, and I think it was about 20, 22 games. Still. Which I was, I was happy with. And, you know, the semi-final of the Irish Cup that year, I got man of the match. We played Bangor. Um, and then it got to the final and I, I wasn't involved at all. And that was probably in hindsight that that hurt me bad. It did. That, that was a real dagger to the heart because um, obviously I felt that it was in good form and I was doing well. Um, but again, a young kid and, and whatever. But I think that sort of then, that made me more determined then. We bit of motivation for you. Yeah, yeah, as I say, yeah. Um, and look, I, I, I didn't end up getting any medals for, from that season. Um, but look, I gained a lot of experience um, from that season. And as I say, not getting anything, any medals or anything from it was, as you say, uh, an extra motivational factor yeah. for me. Brilliant, mate. Uh, so we'll go on to the second season, another double. This, this Limfield squad at the minute is just ripping it up. So they win the league again and the Irish Cup. What Can you remember much about that season? Yeah, that, I actually just played the majority of that season. I'll... Um, so that was my second season, and um, as I say, played the majority of the season. Um, and uh, again, just you know, that was the my first then, obviously medals, senior medals. Um, yeah. You know, obviously winning the league, uh, and then the Irish Cup, um, which was against Dungannon that year on penalties we won. Yeah. And um, I suppose in most of the. The finals that we have played in, so the Irish Cup ones, we haven't, we haven't been, well, they haven't been great performances um, now, but we've Just won. Cup which nerves, is, isn't it? Cup there. Yeah. But yeah, but that season, um, as I say, was very special for me because I was involved a lot. Yeah. Um, and, you know, getting the, you know, the first senior medals and things, and he ended up in that um, final getting man of the match and stuff as well. Um, again, which was, was was very special and stuff and but again look I always look to you know the guys who had playing with me now and who always I say I keep saying you know they helped me along the way as, as a young as a young boy young kid um, learning their trade and certainly learning their trade sort of at, at Linfield um, I was very very lucky yeah uh, so we'll go on to the next season another travel it's just starting to get ridiculous here. So <laughs> I was just going to ask you, like Big Davies training, is it different? What what sort of what's his approach? Is it just your average? Are you still putting there's part time here? Yeah, we're yeah, well, we're three nights a week. Yeah. It was three nights a week now, and nothing's nothing's changed. Still, still the three nights. Um, to be sometimes, you know, probably like yourself, 
you know, now you're going to train or whatever, and sometimes you could, you've maybe had a hard day at work or, or whatever it is, and it's a crap night outside, or and you sort of could do could do without it. Um, but I think what keeps you going is 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 your teammates. Now you know the banter, the camaraderie, and and once you get there, you know your your whole mood and demeanor changes. You know because you're you're seeing the boys again and just. The crack and the banter, and I, I, I've always said, Jamie, that's what wins the trophies, mate. Seeing yeah, that, it is. You know, dark, cold night on a Tuesday, and you, you're just uh-huh. up and you're straight back out. It that, is. That was my next question. Just uh, in the changing room, like there must be a tight bond there because it's just yeah. after trophy after trophy. Like I've probably been fortunate where now I haven't really been involved in really any bad changing rooms. To be honest with you. Um, Certainly, whenever I first went to Limfield, like over that those few years, it was, it was, it was who's, ruthless. Who's, it was who's crazy. The best, who's the best? Um, uh, what? Who was the best cracker in that era? Um, look with Winky there and Stephen Douglas and Big Mackers was yeah. some crack like. And I'm gonna try and get Mackers on. Those yeah, do really you know what? Now, just everyone contributed in 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 their own way. Um. You know, and I would have got the, being the younger one, I would have got the blunt of the, the banter and <laughs> along with Mark picking and stuff. But look, it was, and Davy Larmer would have got a good good bit of the, the, the blunt of it as well. But we had just, as you say, look, whenever you have a really good change, you know, everyone fighting and going yeah. in the same direction, you know, everything seems to work easier and fall into place um, a lot easier. And Big Davy's training was back then. Now, you know, you're talking what, 13, 14 years ago, maybe, you know, you know, yourself, it was a lot, a lot of it was physical work. Yeah. Um, you know, David used to have you, remember it pre-season time, like, you know, we used to turn up and my first pre-season was at, um, on the Malone Road was in playing fields. Yeah. And, um, turned up and, um, had the cricket pavilion, the, 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 yeah. the pitch, uh, set out. And we had to, um, had to do what was it eight laps in twelve minutes. Then then now we had to do uh, three laps in six minutes. Right. And then we had to do it was two laps in four minutes or something. Big baby joined. Two laps in three minutes or something, and it was. Davy used to stand in the middle with a stopwatch, <laughs> just just a golder. Keep going and all this carry on. I never forget one of the times I run. Me and Jim Irvin used to always, you know, used to run together and used to be beside each other. And yeah. um, used to always find a level. And it was it was always me and him beside each other. I remember one of the times running around, and Jim, we're near the end, like, but remember we Jim continuing to run as he was being sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't remember Mark McAllister he was the best at it he used to he used to near enough get to a stage where he was near enough walking because he was that busted and then all of a sudden he had maybe a, a lap and a half to go two laps and the next yeah. minute he used to sprint uh, <laughs> just think just be things were just you know just he was always sticking your head and you know, as I say, as the, as the years were done, you know, obviously you had players coming and going. As it's, that's football, that's the business that, that we're all in. And then my boys come in, but Mark McAllister came, who was he was a rocket. Ah, but a good, but a good, a good, a good lad. Now, like you know, a really good lad. He was he was a lunatic. Um, Paul Monster came as well at one stage, and yeah. pff, boys used to have him tortured, just to draw on his trousers and all. And, <laughs> Just to turn up. I remember one night he, he he bought this course. It was an automatic, and I would say it was it was probably worth about a hundred quid. This course he bought, and he used to put a steering lock on it. <laughs> <laughs> the boy was the same. The, the the steering lock probably was worth more than the car. Like, and then um, remember one night coming out after train. Galty and Mark McAllister had the barricades across his car with cones on top of it, and they were sitting on the bonnet. <laughs> so I think, you know, we used to, as I say, look, you need to have, I think for you to, 
they enjoy the game and they enjoy training and they enjoy the environment. You need to have characters and people like that. Um, yeah. You know, and look, the times you know, didn't do too bad. You know what I mean? No, and as I say, look, your boys are. You've seen yourself now that you know they overstep the mark sometimes. But you know what? It's how you manage it. And look, at it is what it is. And you know, David was very good at that. And um, as I say, with the team camaraderie that we would have had. You know, we used to go away on the end of season trips and all, and used to be twenty boys going on everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm sure you've been involved in sort of teams like that yourself. Now, you know, yeah. common star and all there. You know, they don't win anything with with not getting on with each other and um, and having that team camaraderie. Do you know what I mean? I think that's where it definitely does. If you, it's half a battle for me anyway. Definitely, it's half a battle. But uh, we'll go on anyway. Oh eight, oh nine season. The unthinkable happens. Zero trophies. Mm. Is it because Big Davey, Big Davey signs Connor Higgins? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, only, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Connor, I know Connor. Connor used to come to our training sometimes, and he used to come on a big X five, and he used to park it in the gap in between his teeth. <laughs> He's an idiot. Higgins was another lunatic. Now as you know, like. Yeah. Another lunatic, yeah. not a good, but again, you know, a good, a a a good guy, good fella, like. Um, yeah. uh, we'll go back. We'll go back to the hang of football. So, as I say, no trophies in that season. Glenn Ferguson uh, is getting older. Peter Thompson has moved to uh, Stockport. Was it? Uh, was Stockport? Yeah, yeah Stockport. Yeah, now. And the Glens won it. So. Do you think there's a, uh, the team's getting older? Is gonna you're gonna have to sort of regroup, or what's the sort of feel? Um, it um, I would certainly say it um, focused us again. Yeah, um, you know, obviously we focused us, and and um, I suppose if you're, I then feel if you don't um, win anything now, then. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, changes have to be made. Um, and obviously then that's personnel um, on the playing staff. Uh, and obviously, you know, you build a relationship with people, but as I said before, that's it's a business. It's the way yeah. football is. If you're not being successful, then changes have, have to be made. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously then that, in our case, then if you don't win anything at Linfield, then that's what has to happen you know you need fresh blood in the door um whether it's hungrier players players that you know want an opportunity and feel want to prove themselves mm-hmm. whatever it is um and obviously that that happened um and as i say you know peter thompson was could be a massive loss to, to, to any team oh, um I mean, the things we've just previously spoke about, like him and Glenn Ferguson, like aye, most prolific duo ever, like lethal. It's um crazy, and you know, as I say, whenever you're playing balls there, especially in the spike, you know, the age that he was at, but he still had all the qualities and was still one of the best around. But you know, you knew as a midfielder playing it into him, you knew it was going to stick, and yeah, you're able to make runs off him, make runs beyond, and you know. You look at the at the season, you know, whenever Macker scored so many goals and stuff as well, and so we'd scored many so many goals from midfield that yeah. you know, Spike would have been the you know, the pinnacle of that because obviously you'd a you'd a, a vocal point there, you know, a, a point to play off and and he was that man who who could do it. Yeah, unbelievable. Great target man. Uh so the next season after the pistol Pete comes back and you just get Another double, funny enough. Uh, Beat Porto down the final, Irish Cup. You remember much about that? I remember. Um, I remember now. There was always, um, always through those years, sort of after not winning that the the U eight O nine the next season and the few seasons after that, whenever David was in charge, I always remember that there was always a time during the season where the press and whatever would have. Been sort of sitting waiting mm-hmm. for sort of something to change in the sense that we'd maybe had a couple of bad results and it was, uh, 
David Jeffries under pressure and yeah. blah, all these things, blah, blah, blah. And I remember during that season that we were going okay now. We're, we're all right. Um, and I think um, what won us the league was whenever Peter came back in January. Um, and I think that was the year now, if I'm right, where there was um, no games for a period of time because of the weather. Right. I'm near sure that was. And um, so that wee break worked for us. And then obviously Peter came back. Yeah. Um, and I remember I was doing a bit of coaching and one of the people from the club because he knew that I would have been friendly and stuff with Peter that mm-hmm. said, you know, have you heard anything about Peter and stuff and whatever? Um, I think then that was the start of maybe, I think Stockport were struggling financially as well now. So I think that was maybe the time then where the thought sort of thought we maybe need something that can kick us on yeah. Um, yeah. and push us on and, and, and win us the league. And obviously they seen Peter being that man um, and, I would certainly say that he, he was that man. Um, I think I think now the first game that we came back and played, one of the first ones was away to DC. Mm-hmm. I think Peter scored one or two this first game back. Um, yeah. Now I think obviously... Yeah, Peter scored... Um, I'm near sure it was one or two. I think he scored a couple now. Um, at DC that night, and say I think um, I think as a striker, if you move to a club or you make a move, that I think it's for them that if you score early on, it's a big, big plus. Yeah. And I think you, you know, I think you've set the tone, and you know, I think then you will a lot of times you'll you'll move forward and yeah. and and score, keep scoring. Um, and as I say, Peter done that for us. It was a big boost for us now, and. You know, a player of, of that caliber coming in the our squad, that coming back in the our squad, and that the club were able to get. Because uh, I think at that time now as well, we had, we were, sh- we were, f- possibly in this early stages of a few of the boys being full time. Right. Um, and as I say, look, that went the, a long, long way. Um, Peter signed again to, to, to win us um, yeah. the league then. It was a gold machine, that man. Yeah. Gold machine. So, at the end of that season, you finally get a call up to the Northern Ireland senior squad. Nigel, why they come the manager? Yeah, it was now. Um, I actually, I had been, um, I'd been injured then um, and I just more or less made, you know, was on the bench for that game against Porto Down um, and was, to be honest, we was just delighted to to be involved. Um, as I say, yeah, I, is it the cup final? Yeah, yeah. No, I ha- I had been injured. Um, I think I might have injured it um a number of weeks now, maybe before. I think it might have been against Ingannon. Um, yeah. put around my ankle, foot, and um. But anyway, yeah. So I played that. We played the final, and then I was as I was going up the tunnel. Um had a conversation to see if I would be available and fit. Um and obviously said yes and Absolutely. <laughs> so off off I went then to um America and Chile. Class mate. You remember much about your debut? Are you started, didn't you? Yeah, so I started and finished um both games. Well um you know it was Gareth McCullough there, Stephen Cregan was there. Um, who were obviously, you know, big, big name internationals. Um, who else did we have now? Michael McGovern was there as well. Um, who else would have been there? Ram McGovern was there. Yeah. Corey Evans was there now. Um, so, yeah, so look, Macaulay and obviously Stephen Cregan were the, were the regulars in the, on the international scene. Um, but look, I suppose me being an Irish League player that you sort of don't think that it's yeah. something like that will ever happen. Um, and it did. And I suppose if most of the regular internationals I had a went in the trip, I'd have been nowhere near it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. well, we were struggling for numbers. So <laughs> I was I was one of the ones on the list then that, Absolutely. that they were picking from. Um, and look, 
it was a great experience. Brilliant. Um, Nigel Warrington was was great. Um, it's very good to me on on the trip and stuff. And um, it, uh, as I say, it was a fantastic experience and playing in a different sort of was obviously a far far higher level of football that that I would be playing in yeah. now week in week out. And um, like it was good to get an insight of of the level that you know some of those boys were at. Did you get the run around like, or was it competitive? Look, well, we were playing. You know, Turkey had near enough a full team out in yeah, Chile like as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were playing. We played. And that's after the game against Turkey. Um, Andy Massey, who obviously he used to be the the chief doctor there at, at Liverpool. Yeah. Um, and Terry Hayes is obviously still our physio at Linfield. I remember after the game against Turkey, I was walking off and. I nearly collapsed because <laughs> it was the, the the heat and everything. It was wild, and they near enough had to walk me off the pitch afterwards. Um, but as I say, look, it was an opportunity of a lifetime, and probably an opportunity that I probably knew that wouldn't come around again. Brilliant. So, uh, see it at this stage when you go back to Linfield. Are you full full time or still part time? Or um, I am. Um, the club, there was a few of us who were full-time now, and then I, um, I signed full-time then. I was actually, I'd actually just finished, served my time as an electrician. Did you? Yeah, did I. Um, don't, don't ask me to do anything. Like. <laughs> I, I am an electrician, I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my mom wouldn't let me anywhere near anything in our house, for the sake. Um, but yeah, I, I ended up, the club sort of said, um, would I be interested? And I sort of said yes. And to be honest with you now, being honest, I had to take a, a pay cut sort of to do it. Because um, yeah. the, the two jobs that I had combined, you know, yourself, you know, on the tools of electrician, um, it's, it's decent money and stuff. And as I say, then I had the Linfield money as well. Um, but so look, I was well, and I sort of thought to myself, I think I was maybe... I'd maybe be more 24, 25 maybe at the time. And I sort of thought, I have any aspirations, maybe even having a sniff of maybe getting across the water or whatever it may be. Because, you know, at that time, you know, it, it, you still maybe weren't too old, you know, to, mm-hmm. for that to happen. I think I was 23, 24 now. And I sort of thought that's the last hurrah, if you want to say, you know, to maybe have that that chance. And, I enjoyed the full time. Um, maybe it wasn't proper full time now, but what what was a typical day in the um, So we would have, so we would have went in on a Monday now, Monday morning, done a pit session with Dennis. Then would have maybe trained at um, night time. Then Monday night would have done. I think it was Tuesday night, and then would have been Wednesday morning. Then would have been Thursday morning, Thursday night, and then I think we maybe been off on a Friday yeah and obviously with the match on the Saturday um if we had a match say Tuesday you know obviously the Wednesday was recovery we had um with gym memberships now for DW on the Boucher Road so they so gym sessions would have been in there doing gym sessions as well how many how many Um, of these is there um there would have I think mm, possibly eight now eight to ten Mm -hmm. um obviously look the club are trying their best, trying to reach the next level now. Um, sometimes you didn't have the numbers because you maybe had injuries or after a game people had knocks or whatever. Yeah. Um, but as I say, it, I certainly do feel that it benefited me. Um, and other boys would have said the same just because you weren't um, maybe getting a day's work now and then rushing to training or playing a match that night, you know your whole attention and your whole focus was to playing football and the and you know and which was a big big help. Um and as I say I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that aspect of it. Um it would have been far better if the whole squad would have been because it would have benefited us more. Um but as I say the club are trying their best, you know, to maybe slowly work it that way and then obviously, you know, it, it didn't work out. But Certainly my and stuff involved. Well that's the thing now, yeah. Um but certainly now, you know, in the, the, the stage that we're at now at Linfield that I think it's more realistic where 
you would get certainly 90-95% of the squad, you know, being yeah. able to, to do it and ban and do it. Yeah. So, uh, just as you say, you're 24-25 at this stage, and the likes of Kilmarnock and Hibs are looking at you, and also a few MLS teams. Can you tell me much about that? Uh, I don't really know about the Kilmarnock Hibs thing. That, that might have been, might have had a good agent at that time or something, maybe, you know, <laughs> selling <laughs> fake news. Um, <laughs> I never heard anything um, right. from them now, to be honest with you. Um, I remember seeing it in papers and stuff, but I never, never heard, mm-hmm. never heard of Dickie Bird, never heard anything from them. Um, regarding the whole MLS thing, sort of America thing, um, what happened was Limfield were sort of stopping the full time. Mm-hmm. Um, now that's the time came where they were stopping it. Um, again, I had they had offered me a three year contract, so it was there sitting there. Um, and I had said to them that I wanted to sort of try and pursue an opportunity full time. Um, this opportunity in America had come about through um, family friends of mine. Who, who who live in America and still do in Portland, Oregon, um, and they, um, Bill there had a very good friend who was an agent at the time and a lot of contacts around the MLS. So that's how that came about. Um, but I had said to Linfield that it was nothing to do with money now, and it wasn't. Yeah. Um, they knew that. I told them that because the the offer that I had got for going back to part time, I was delighted with. I was really really happy with. Um. So as I say, it was never about, you know, the money. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so went to um America and I ended up I ended up being out there now for like two months. Right. Um started off with Columbus Crew for five days, <clears throat> then spent a month then, about a month or so in, in Portland, um with stayed with the family friends and I trained with um Portland Timbers and stuff and then finished off um at Orlando City. So they weren't MLS at that time as they are now. Yeah. Went to Orlando City um, now, and they um, they were managed by Adrian Heath, who used to play for Everton. Right. And the Timber of Portland actually were managed by John Spencer at right. the time as well. Sounds so I um, ended up going there, trained with Orlando City. Um, and I remember the first session I got there, and... They used to train really, really early in the morning because of the heat. Right. I remember going there and I was staying with two guys. One was actually from Trinidad and the other one was from Chicago. Stayed with them too. Most of the players stayed on site in these apartments. Mm-hmm. I got to training and I just made an absolute idiot of myself. A complete <laughs> and utter. You'd have thought I'd never played football before, just come off the street just to turn up to join in a football session. Honestly, I couldn't move because of the heat. Uh, humidity, so, you were there, so. uh, honestly, I had ne- it was horrific. And I remember no one, no one said anything to me. I think they all thought, who's this clump it here? <laughs> and um, probably like, they probably thought, Yo, here's another bloody trellis coming along, yeah. another, another clump it. So yeah. I remember after like three sessions now, I was fine then. And yeah. I remember training the way, and I was there, I think it was for 10 days, two weeks, and with a great time. I ended up playing a friendly against Bolton right. um, whenever they were premiership, and then the next week they were playing against Newcastle. Well, and I, I support Newcastle, um, and they wanted me to actually stay. They, Whenever I went to Orlando City, it was the end of their season, more or less. Yeah. But they wanted yeah. me just to stay on because I supported Newcastle, and but Linfield didn't basically you know we're near enough getting the stage where they were giving me an ultimatum which was completely understandable because yeah. it was the Linfield we'd already played um Barry Borsoff in a qualifier yeah but I remember then whenever I was leaving the two boys then were taking me to the to the airport and they said you know what Jimmy whenever you came those first couple <laughs> of sessions we were like this fellas this guy who <laughs> is this guy they said but once the, you know the the, the training went on, you got used to the heat and everything then we all knew, you know, yeah, well thought yeah. Flip he's half decent. Yeah. Um but they sort of wanted their season was finishing now and they sort of said about coming back out then whenever the new season was sort of starting. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really feel too comfortable in that to be honest with you in the sense that 
you never know how true people are to their word and whether whether how con how concrete it is. Um, and I didn't want to leave myself with nothing as well. And as I say, look, I enjoyed playing for Linfield and 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 loved it. So, look, it was a no brainer, obviously, to go back there and sign. Obviously, I got a bit of stick from the boys coming back. <laughs> um, but no, look, going over there now it was a great experience and it was good. I, I enjoyed it, enjoyed the lifestyle, and enjoyed the sort of different methods of training and stuff. Um, would you have would you have went on your own, just no family or nothing, just yourself? Uh well, I was I was going with 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 the wife at the time and stuff, and yeah, you know if she would have came and stuff now, um, well I would have wanted her to come anyway, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, uh, we'll move and, um, yeah, so look, and as I say, I enjoyed that. I actually had an opportunity now of um, signing for Perth Glory at a, at a, ta at a stage around yeah. that time as well. Um, Ian Ferguson, who used to play for Rangers, was the manager. Yeah. Um, he actually um, came over here and stuff now and watched me playing in a match. It was whenever the A League was their season had finished and he was coming back to Glasgow. Came over, um, played the match and stuff, and I ended up then meeting him afterwards and spoke um, terms and everything basically. Now and we we're supposed to play the Crusaders. We played the still on the Saturday was the game we came to watch. Then we played um, Crusaders. Then supposed to play Crusaders midweek and it was cancelled because of the weather. Right. And I just never heard anything from him again. The CEO was supposed to come. And we're supposed to sign sort of the papers then. Yeah. Um, and would you have went? You'd have definitely went. I again, I would have went and um, would have went for the season. They were offered me for the season and basically said it'd be up to you. You know, if yeah. if you do well, then you stay longer. Um, and then it ended up that that sort of thing happened with Crusaders and I didn't really hear anything again. And it ended up that they ended up signing Liam Miller then. Right. Obviously. Unfortunately, obviously, is is dead now. Um, and they had signed him, and turned out to be a a really good signing for them, which you would expect with the caliber of player that he was. Um, so yeah, so yeah, those things happen. But look, as to say, you know, everything happens for a reason. Now, you know, you play football for the experiences that you that you can get through it, and and certainly there were good experiences for me, and something that I would have learned from. Brilliant, man. class. So. 2011-2012 season, uh, another double, win the league by 14 points. The team's changed now. There's obviously Alex Albert Watson, uh, yeah. Garrett, Larry, Doyle Fordyce. Yeah. So the new, this will be your, so your second Linfield team, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Would be, yeah. Probably the, the I think David would, would say that he's, you know, built a, quite a few teams. So, yeah, certainly in, in my era. Now you will probably be in the second um, yeah. sort of stage. Um, um, and you also, sorry, we go ahead. Did we play? Was it Crusaders or Coleraine that we played in the final? In Crusaders, Crusaders four one. You finally scored in the Irish Cup final. Can you remember? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I say, look, I said to you before now that you know we haven't particularly played well in certain cup finals. Um, you could probably say that that one we did. Yeah. Um, and played really, played really well that day. Um, and that was probably the time. Yes, would be Crusaders four one now and stuff. But you would probably say that would have been the time whenever Crusaders were starting to yeah. get on the rise. Yeah. Um, and and become a force if you want to say. Um, that's that sort of year was it. The introduction of like the 4G pitches, mm -hmm. and this is where you start seeing a lot of teams starting to generate more money. Yeah. Obviously, getting better players can pay higher wages. So, yeah. after that season, 12 13 is the emergence of Clemble and the likes of yeah. Boys Gormley. Yeah. And then, obviously, Crusaders, yeah, from them for a couple of years too. But, uh, after that season, you scored in the, the cup final, though. He's going a bit of a drought. Uh, I think it's only one county Andrew Sheen. He's winning two seasons. Obviously, as I say, with the emergence of Clinton and stuff. I think we won on penalties that last yeah. time Andrew Sheen did me now. Yeah. 
Um, so obviously that was actually Big Davy's last year, I think, yeah. in charge. Yeah. Yeah. So, bit of a drought, and Davy leaves. Do you think it was the right time for Davy to leave, or do you think he was the press had sort of got their arm in there? I sort of uh, personally, I think. Um, yeah, I think David would probably say himself that it was right the right time for him. Um, and obviously he left on his terms. And um, I, I do think it was the, the, the right time for him more so even health-wise now as well. Because I feel like myself, you know, big David, you know, take was – get he gave everything for Limfield now and you know it does get the stage where it can't get on top of you um and obviously we weren't doing too well and and and, and hadn't been doing too well and I think that you know as I say more for for him personally yeah um yeah. even though with being there for so long it was probably hard you know for him to make the decision and 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 the, and the leave and to let it go but I would probably say now that in hindsight, he probably thinks that it was the right mm-hmm. time. Obviously, I was devastated and and, and very very sad um, that 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 was him. You know, finished with us now because, as I say, he brought me to the club and taught me so much and helped me so much and and helped me be what I am um, yeah. today. Uh, but I think, as I say, from from an unselfish point of view you know that it was the right time certainly you know for, for him and, and as I say certainly for health wise because you know being at Linfield for for 16 odd years you know mentally physically and, and, and everything you know and with the success and as I say the pressure that, that David would have been under season after season yeah. was incredible now and yeah. as I say you know what he achieved over that period of time was was sensational and yeah. as I say, you know, it was the time, right time for him just to 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 get out if you want to say. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh so big Davy leaves, um starting to rebuild Warren Finney comes in for a while. Um remember much about Warren? Yeah, Warren came in and um again like like any manager now, um different methods, different ideas. Um, and came in and we started off quite well you know obviously with we qualified with a fair from the Faroes you know into the, the, the next stage and mm-hmm. we played AIK and yeah, beat yeah. them so, now we beat them 1-0 at home yeah yeah so we, you know it was a great start um, under him now and but we just never seemed to I just never like seemed that. to have that sort of ruthless edge to win games. Yeah, now you know, yeah. sort of, you know, if you if, if you're maybe not playing well in matches now, having that sort of having that ruthless edge and that mindset and mentality that the grind out and mm-hmm. um, results, and I think that you know was a big big downside, you know, for us and from us being successful the the being failures really um the the, the not winning anything um and I think you know obviously Warren was building and building um and then obviously he got that offer from from Newport yeah which again is understandably his family lived over there and they had an opportunity to be closer to them so you know that's that's yeah. understandable you know that, that that he came to that decision. Uh so Warren obviously takes a I think he was assistant manager at Newport yeah. Warren. Um, and David Healy comes in. Um, nothing, just didn't win anything. Obviously, Crusaders at this point are sort of yeah. in their rump at the minute. Um, but David's first full season, the 2016 17th season, uh, again, another double. So, what do you think changes? Plus, the kind of Adam Sheen, sorry, so nearly a travel. Uh, yeah. What changes there? Um, Because David's from, management like, style now. For you personally, like for you personally, uh, well, statistic wise, is your best your best year in an shirt. You've won the 
All Star Player of the Year and stuff. Um, you know, Linfield captain. Do you, as I was going to say, do you personally feel that was your best year in Linfield shirt? Um, possibly now, yeah. Um, I think you know, whenever I was younger, I was doing, you know, obviously around, um, you know, obviously around the the teams we would have had, you know, from from year, you know, from years ago where. I was playing regularly with them, but you know, as I say, we had so many players then. We were winning consistently, um, but we were playing well consistently, yeah. um, collectively, um, and obviously then you could pick, you know, a, a number of players. Certainly, you know, from that, from those seasons now, and I think that year would have been the same because obviously, you know, we were so successful that year that there could have been a number of players who yeah. who could have won those individual awards. Um, but I think what changed was um, David's mentality as a manager and his style. Um, he uh, brought that, he was able to instill the ruthless edge and the ruthless mentality yeah. um, that you need to have to, to, to win football matches and to win trophies now. Yeah. And I yeah. think, you know, and I think obviously what really helped us was the County Anthem Shield final. Um, because Crusaders would have had the upper hand on us for a number of years now, um, and I think what finally cracked it for us and and gave us that springboard was whenever we beat them in the County Anthem Shield, mm -hmm. um, final, and that gave us the belief. And as I say, look, obviously with David being there, that from the first day he came in the door, that he he seen, you could say that he seen why we weren't being successful and why we weren't winning things. Um, and obviously, yes, it takes time to build your own team and, and, and to implement what you want. But yeah, I think that season, he, he certainly got there. Yeah. Do you think, uh, as your time at Linfield goes on, maybe in your earlier years, things aren't going well, you have players to look up to, the likes of McAreevy or whoever you want, Pat McShane, whoever. Uh, but as you're going on, you're maybe the one to look up to. Do you think you sort of feel that pressure? No, no, I don't. I actually, I enjoy it, to be honest with you. Um, I enjoy it, and I, uh, what I would say is what motivates me more is that you see um, younger boys coming through the league who are who have the quality, certainly now, because our league is so much more competitive, and there's so many players now involved in our league that could play across the water, no problem, no doubt. But uh, what motivates me is that I'm 34 here in a few weeks, uh, start of June, and what motivates me is that I want to continue to prove to them that that I'm worthy and capable of playing for Limfield and being the captain of Limfield, and hopefully, you know, as a well, as what people say I've done over the years is dominate games, um, and sort of my age now, I sort of want that to continue and um, want do to continue feel, to do you feel you've had to change your game from maybe a box to box to or maybe be um i would say now to be honest with you i'm 30 coming 34 now and i'm probably the fittest i've ever been brilliant um but i think that's down to obviously you evolve with the game and you have to change with the game Um, a lot of it's you know training methods have changed now you know most teams are strength and conditioning coach, fitness coaches, whatever you want to call them. We're no different. Ricky McCann's there with us, who was with Cliftonville and um, was with the Northern Ireland team. And Ricky's just been a breath of fresh air. Um, we had Gary McElwain yeah, in before. Yeah, I that, man. <laughs> fitness and stuff. Oh, unbelievable. And we had a guy, Gary McElwain, who was in before him, who was fantastic as well. And I have... Like all the boys now, we have all bought into what each of them have tried to do and wanted us to do. And yeah. I always thought to myself that if you do buy into it and, and do it, that it will benefit you. And and it has now. Um, even now, you know, obviously in this lockdown period, that I'm in constant dialogue with Ricky. Um, yeah. Send them stuff. He's sending me stuff to do. And um, he's well, helped really me. Have and, somebody like that, like. Well, that's the thing. And Ricky's the type of person. And. I'm sure other clubs are the same now, I'm not just saying that them feel like this, but yeah. you know, Ricky's there whenever you, you need him and I give him a run and he gives me a run, as I say, I, I do it and I, I send him the, the, the proof that I've done it and stuff and we're in dialogue and he would ask me, you know, how I'm feeling and whatever and 
as I say, as I say, look, I've bought into it like like all our boys have. Um, and as I say, we enjoy Ricky being there with us and and doing the things he does with us. And as I say, I feel as fit as ever. And I think if as long as you are fit and you have the right mindset and mentality now, then that can prolong your your career and hopefully that can continue to be for me and like obviously you know you stay injury free as well which can, which can help you certainly at my age as well brilliant uh so we'll move on a wee bit uh eight, 18 19 season uh league and league cup double beat balamina 1-0 in the final uh win the league by seven points over balamina balamina had a decent season yeah. Yeah. Um, can you remember much about that yeah, look, obviously, uh, we were all hurting now from the season before, which was the worst season that I've ever been involved in. And, and Linfield's, you know, probably one of Linfield's, you know, long history. I just, I just, just sort of glanced over that. <laughs> I know, look, it, 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 it probably helped us be successful that yeah. the next year now. Um, I can't put my finger on why it was such a disaster. Um, I don't know if it was burnout. Um, from obviously because we had to start so early in the season um, with a lot of injuries. I was injured for most of that season as well. and um, I don't know. It was very, very strange and crazy, just crazy, crazy time. And I think that's whenever you sort of need a, a strong change in where you have to stick together um, yeah. now, which is very, very important. Um, but look, that was the first year where I hadn't been involved in, in European football now. But... Although that was really, really disappointing and such a disaster, I do think that we needed that extra break yeah. to recharge the batteries and hit the ground running for whenever the season was starting. Yeah, and we did that. We went on and done that, and and last year with a with a really, really strong, good season, playing really good football, and I'm just being back to what them feel should be a real force. Yeah. Um, and as I say. We had a new players come in and, and, and they really helped us and, and made us stronger and better. And as I say, the, the disappointment of the season before, as I say, recharged the batteries and made us hungrier yeah. um, to, to, to go and do what we did. And then obviously you've got sort of this year now where I would say for for us as a squad personally would be to can you make history as a squad and create our only bit of history off now we we did the European adventure, and yeah. can we then go on and repeat what we did last year by winning another league, and can we win back to back leagues and be a team, be a squad that that will go down Linfield's history and that people will will talk about and speak about. Yeah, does would David have like meetings at the start of the season and have a chat with the players and be like, the lads come there, I want X Y Z. Um. Okay. It was we sort of have a, a a debrief at the end of every season now. Um, what he expects from us, you know, during pre-season and just sort of making sure that we're looking after ourselves and not mm-hmm. getting on like idiots and, yeah. <laughs> and being unprofessional and whatever. Um, so yeah, he speaks about that, and then we get in for the new season and we have an itinerary there and we get our weights, body fat, all that carry on take, and we have a chat of. Um, where do we want to go? What what can we achieve? But you would never say I want this, I want that. Um, because I think now that we're all realistic in the environment that we're in, especially at Linfield, is that they want to win everything. Um, the the, the fans and on the board want want to win everything, and I have no issue with that because I have the same mindset. Yeah. Look, it's the chances of it happening are very, very slim, but it doesn't stop you from dreaming and wanting um, to do it. And as I say, I have that mindset as well. And I think you have to, you know, no matter what football team you're at, you know, Glentorn, Lorne, Cliftonville, you know, you're out to play every game and every competition to win it. Yeah. Um, and if you have, you know, a group of players that have that same mindset and that same hunger, then you'll go, you know, you'll not be too far away. Yeah. I think as soon as that may set changes, it's maybe time to hang them up. But sure. Listen, this current season, uh, he's a creep, creep ahead there. Four points clear at the minute. What would you like to happen? 
the season to finish now. Um, yeah, look, I'd rather, um, I'd rather have it in our hands now than sort of cutting the the season short and, you know, you maybe haven't won it properly now, um, yeah. or, you know, what's the verdict then? What conclusion do they come to? Um, and look, if you finish out the season and we don't win it, well then, that's life. Yeah. At least, you know, it is, it is you know, you, you, you've played the remaining games, it's been in your hands, you haven't done it, you haven't done it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and personally, I do think now, to be honest with you, it is a two-horse race. It's between us and, and Paul Rain. Um, that's like the, two, the, two, the two teams have just found a wee edge. Doesn't yeah, and I think you know before before this all happened. Now we were sort of were were in good form. We're hitting, we're sort of getting through the gears well. You know, because yeah. I would say this year that I would say personally now that we've had an okay season and we're top of the league. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I mean? That's always good. That's always good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you know, we're going through. We've had a three wee, a few wee rough patches and stuff. But you know, we went the way to Balamina which is a, a low ball. I mean, I haven't been going well, but they're still very capable of, of turning you over um, if, you, yeah. if you don't have the right attitude, especially away from home. Yeah. And we really beat them well now. And then we obviously then played Crusaders and played fantastically well. We built on the ball mini game and, you know, took Crusaders apart. Um, and then obviously we had that break, which... With the in between the car game because the Irish Cup, and to be honest, with you now that worried me a wee bit because I wasn't sure then. Once you're in a sort of feel it, once you're in a good rough form, you have that break, it sort of stops the momentum. You have to keep it and yeah. And we went to Carrick again, it was really, really bad conditions. The wind was howling, if you remember that Saturday, and away to Carrick again, really, really tough game, you know, it's a side who's probably done better than what most people would have thought and again we played well you know played well considering that you know the, the conditions and as I say we were starting to go through the gear as well and then obviously this all happened so look I want want to play the rest of the matches and finish the season now but yeah. I think we'll have to be realistic that the longer it goes on is that going to happen especially the European stuff coming up and yeah and again, now do you, are the uh, I do you think well I've seen that you have said that there will be qualifiers, but it's okay saying that it's okay saying that now, but but will there? No. Nobody knows. And it's again, you know, it's it's okay, you know, the Premiership and this league are playing behind closed doors and they've but the money that, that those are nice. worth and that they have, yeah, nowhere near what but we have, you know. And I know people go on about Limfield and say, oh, Limfield have this and Limfield have that. But like every club in our league now, and the same in the Scottish league, that's why they've cut short. Yeah. We can't afford to play behind closed doors. No, um, And then they're saying about like £10,000 per match, you know, for the testing. They're <laughs> 70 grand for one team. Yeah. Per team. Yeah. Uh, and then, but then you're saying, but then they'll play behind closed doors. So where do you get the seventy grand from? No revenue coming in. Do you know what I mean? I mean, we've never obviously it's never experienced these type of things, but yeah, I think whatever the season to come to should be safety first. You know what I mean? Yeah, and as I say, look, well, I would love to get the season. I really would, and I really mean that, then um, because everybody you know who plays football, no matter what level we're all at, we're all missing playing football. You know, I'm a CM. I haven't kicked yeah. the first of February or something. Yeah, and. I haven't kicked the ball now since the Carrick one. I haven't met up with the teammates yeah. since since we played Carrick. Mm-hmm. I've trained away on my own, which don't get me wrong, I'm actually enjoying the training aspect of it all. I really am. Yeah. Um, but as I say, I just miss the competitiveness. I miss the crack with the boys and the camaraderie that you get from it. And as I say, I'd love to get the season finished. I really yeah. would. Um, but... Look, I'm glad I'm not making that decision. That's it. Time will tell as well. You know what I mean? So, uh, where are we? What's, well, as I said there, a couple of weeks or 34. What's your future plans as in playing and then do you ever see yourself um, in the management or coaching or? 
coaching certainly appeals to me. It does now, hundred percent. I would have my mind made up that I would like to coach. Um, managing, I don't know. I sort of sit in the fence at the minute of that. Um, I, think lot, I think a lot of people love the coaching aspect, but then don't really. I um, the other side. Don't get me wrong. Now, if you if you if you get you know further down the line and and Limfield say to you, will you take the job? <laughs> How do you say no? Do you know what I mean? Um, but as I say, look, I'm in the process of hopefully finishing my A license and stuff and I have my own coaching business there where I coach kids and, Brilliant. and stuff. I enjoy that and I'll enjoy the coaching and um, managing. I'm not sure yet. My wife would say definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just, you don't know where the, seat, where the future holds, but as I say, play for as long as possible. Hopefully that's at Limfield. And then coaching. Uh, just one final one. Uh, what was the, what was your best squad you think you've played in at Linfield over the years from you just joined till now? You probably say the first couple of years now. Um, you know, doing the, the clean sweep and then three trophies after that. Yeah. Um, as I say, I always say and I, and I say wholeheartedly and fondly that I was very very lucky. Like as a young boy coming into that environment with those players and I learned so much off them. I continue to carry those attributes and, and all those things that they taught me and, and that I learned from, you know, I continue to carry them on and hopefully I'm able to to do the same with the boys, the young boys that we have now. Yeah. Um, but I would say those those early ones, um, it was just filled with, with class to be honest with you. And and back then, now you know you're only able to get three subs on. You know, there's only three subs in the bench back then. So it was, you know, people forget that as well. Um, All squads. Yeah, but it was good. Now it was very, very good. So it was. I would say that 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 time, you know, was. And that's not taken away from any other squads because we had so many fantastic players over my time with Limfield. Really have been, and very, very fortunate and lucky to to have played with them and been involved with them. Um, but I don't think you can sort of dismiss sort of the, the early couple of years and I think I would say that as well because I was a young boy mm-hmm. and I was in off of, of, of them yeah you know of growing up and watching some of them and stuff now I think I you know because I was in awe of them really brilliant uh so just we finish here just a wee quick quiz for you yeah. uh late in the movie but so best and worst so best finisher finisher would be Andy Waterworth Right. I'll do per, I'll do players that I'm currently playing with. Um, right. no I think Andy's record speaks for himself now. Yeah. Worst would be myself. Sometimes <laughs> I get through on goal and training, and a score, and the boys are in absolute shock. <laughs> uh, David would say to me, "Where'd you pull that from? Where did you get that from?" Um, uh, best touch. Uh, best touch probably. Um, certainly. Technique wise, um, Kirk Miller would be one of the best players in our squad um, now, and the worst would be Mark Stafford. <laughs> First, second touch is a tackle. <laughs> fittest, fittest would be Kirk and Nal Quinn. They they do these runs and they just never look out of breath. Now there's just some people that are like that. Yeah, used to oh. Steve Douglas. Steve Douglas would have been like that now. Stephen Douglas would have, you know, if we were turning up for training and during pre-season or whatever, and they'd have maybe had a few drinks on a Friday night and you turned up on Saturday and run you into the ground. Do you know, he's still playing his 40s, uh-huh. isn't he? Yeah, he's still with Corian. But Kirk and Nal just, I, you know, <gasps> and they're just gliding. Himself. Oh, serious. Uh, on for uh, Jimmy Colliger hates it. Hates the running, hates all that stuff. But here, it works for him now because he's he's a he's a brilliant player, brilliant centre back for us. Like, uh, quickest, Joel Cooper. Um, I actually didn't realise how quick Joel was until he signed for us, and then I don't know what he was doing over pre season or whatever it was before he came to us. But he came and it was just like, beep beep. Yeah, I had the pleasure of marking him a couple of times when he was <laughs> 
just uh just so quick um now jimmy Callagher game would, would be up there with the slowest um right. on a quick sand uh, um, uh calmness on the pitch we uh young boy who's been with us now used to be with swansea now stevie fallon um <laughs> It can do, could be anything he wants. Doesn't um, get phased. No, ice, ice cold. Brilliant. Nothing uh, phases him. Doesn't say too much. Great kid. Great, just great trainer. Just great attitude. Everything you want, and he um, take the ball anywhere. Yeah. And right. he just. I love that type of player. Ice, ice cold. Ah, uh, who's a maniac on the pitch? Maniac. Jeez. A few. Uh, Roy Carroll was Roy <laughs> Carroll was Roy <laughs> Carroll was in another level. Keepers are a different breed, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> Roy Carroll was another level. Yeah, but you know, a good friend of mine now, and um, all the boys, you know, still speak fondly of him, even though at times just to think, Oof. yeah, they're not sure what sort of <laughs> mood or when Roy was going to snap or whatever, but. Yeah. To be fair, the boy, we miss him, you know, um, great to have about and, you know, the things he's won where he's played. But Roy was, I mean, Roy was bonkers. Brilliant. Uh, and last one, just there's no worse, just best hogger you've, you've been with on a pitch. Uh, Jimmy Collagher is very good with us at the minute. Um, now, especially with me playing in front of him in midfield and up me and Jimmy would be sort of, you know, the main talkers, you know. Yeah. If you're on the pitch, Andy Waterworth the same. Just you know, senior boys, you know who, yeah. you know, have a bit of know how about the game, and you know, good lads, and you know, and and sort of help the younger ones or or whatever it may be. But Jimmy's very good, you know, talking to you from behind and sort of, but yeah. like myself, you know, talking to the rest of the boys during the during the match and probably knowing when to let out a golder and knowing when to you know just be calm. Um, yeah. Jimmy's very, very good. Brilliant, mate. So, just we look back six or seven Irish leagues, six Irish cups, two league cups, two county anthem shields. How do you look back on your career so far, Jimmy? Um, fondly and 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 okay. enjoy, obviously enjoyable now. Um, I suppose whenever I first signed for Limfield, I would never have imagined that it would be here 14 odd years yeah. later like um and obviously being the captain which is obviously the, the 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 pinnacle that you can probably get to now um and obviously you know it's the same you know like obviously i, I always wanted to play for limfield if you you know obviously you want to play across the water and, and whatever it is but you know i always thought that you know the next best thing over here is limfield you know the team as i say who i supported and now to to continue to be there and to be the captain and one would have won so far. And again, it's the same with it with, with any fan, you know, if you support Cliftonville, Crusaders, Glen Torn, you know, if you're not gonna get playing across the water, your dream then is to yeah the 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 to play for that team. And as I say, I was able to to play that in the game with in the early days, playing with players that I would have maybe went and watched, grew up watching. Um Sort of my sort of favorite player growing up watching Limfield now was was Tony Gorman, um, yeah. who again was a, a a really really good player. But he would have been one that I would have always watched and and, and looked up to. And whenever I went to the games, and as I say, yeah, I'm very 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 lucky and fortunate that that it's all panned out the way it has, and it's still going, and hopefully it still goes on longer. Well, I mean, just. Thanks very much. Uh, no worries. Thanks for asking me. Uh, we quick shout out just uh, to Vinny who set it up for us. Mark Van. <laughs> uh, you see him before I do. Tell him he's, a, I am, he's another lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Jimmy, thanks a lot. Appreciate thanks very it. much for asking me. Thank you, Nan. Thanks.